a career in research and academia for pharmaceutical science graduates. What are the main aspects of working as an academic researcher? Well, the main aspect is research, which involves initially reviewing all the previous research done by other people and using that to identify possible drugs to solve a problem. Once you've identified the drugs, um, you then need to obtain the drug and normally this can be done by either purchasing the drug from a supplier or by extracting it from nature or by synthesizing it in a laboratory. Once you've obtained a drug, you'll still need to test it for purity to make sure it really is pure and this involves analytical chemistry such as spectrometry, um, mass spectrometry, nuclear magnetic resonance, uh, UV, infrared and melting point analysis and chromatography. Once you have a pure, a pure sample of the drug, you will then need to establish its therapeutic dosage by formulating it based on absorption, distribution, metabolism and elimination. Researchers are also involved in publishing papers on areas of work in peer-reviewed, well-respected journals and writing reports, books or chapters of books on needed specialist areas of knowledge. They are also involved in teaching and supervising university students, speaking at conferences and planning research by attending meetings with colleagues and contributing to the strategic direction of the department or group. There are many applications of pharmaceutical research. The medical application deals with the use of drugs to cure, treat and prevent disease, but is also used to alleviate pain which often accompanies chronic diseases, or allergy which is very common in the form of, for example, food allergies or pollen allergies or animal related allergies. It's also used to speed up wound healing so people get better quicker, especially um, as they get older, wound healing slows down. So ways to speed up wound healing are important. Uh, we also have the field of toxicology used to determine the harmful effects of drugs. This can be find application in food safety where we're looking at different ingredients to see what effects they have on the human body and also looking at the toxicological effects of different drugs such as paracetamol, aspirin and so on. It also has application in agriculture for pest control and pesticides. Not all applications are to do with helping people who are ill to get better. Some applications are to do with helping healthy people become even more healthy. For example, using drugs to enhance athletic performance by increasing strength, speed and endurance, or using drugs to upregulate repair in the human body so people get an extended health and, a, and an extended lifespan. Also in cosmetics the uh, one of the targets is to regenerate the body so people can have an extended youthful appearance by learning to use drugs to regenerate hair skin, bone and muscle. So there are many applications of pharmaceutical research which are of great interest. The day-to-day -day activities of a pharmaceutical researcher in academia are basically research, publication, teaching 
and funding. Research involves a literature review, which is reviewing the current literature on a particular subject and come, using that to come up with new ideas. Then uh, using bioinformatics to identify possible drug candidates. Once you have identified a drug candidate, then obtaining the drug either by purchasing it or by extracting it from nature or by synthesizing it in a laboratory and then testing your product for purity. Once you have your product in a pure form, then it can be formulated into a medication which takes into account absorption, distribution, metabolism and excretion of the product and its relevant pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics. One of the big aspects of research is analysing the large data sets produced using statistical techniques and experimental design. And then finally you're publishing your results in a written form in peer-reviewed journals. Researchers um, produce journals, reports, books or chapters of books on the areas of knowledge they are specialised in. You may also be presenting at conferences and delivering before national and international audiences. As mentioned, you'll also be teaching, doing undergraduate and postgraduate students and Undoubtedly, you'll be spending some time fundraising, applying for external funding, in addition to the income that you receive from your employer. So all these are activities involved in research. Researchers can have many different roles. They usually start off as a PhD student or researcher and move on to postdoctoral research associate and then on to research associate or fellow and then into higher education as lecturer then as a senior lecturer then as a reader then as a professor Usually researchers start out by aiding another senior researcher on their project, which would be for a few months to a year. New researchers gain experience by doing this and it allows them to move on to more extended projects. At senior level, researchers are able to manage their own budgets and staff. So what are the pros and cons of being a pharmaceutical researcher in academia? Well, the biggest pro is discovery. You'll be making some amazing discoveries. Uh, for example, uh, the discovery that the plant Artemisia is able to inhibit cancer 10 times better than any known chemotherapy. The discovery that vitamin D is, helps to regenerate bones, helping to protect people from osteoporosis. The discovery that certain amino acids and secragogues can regenerate your immune system by regenerating the thymus to a youthful level, and so on. These kinds of discoveries make working in this kind of career very worthwhile, regardless of the cons. Working as a pharmaceutical researcher also has the advantage that you'll make connections with many people in different parts of the world who share your interests. And this career also comes with a high degree of autonomy, so you'll be able to work at a pace that suits you uh, and your hours will be very flexible. You'll also be able to work on subjects that you decide to work on and will not always be working in the same place but maybe working in the field, in the lab or in an office and maybe working in different parts of the world, overseas with other research organisations. On the con side, job security is not always guaranteed since 
uh, funding is hard to come by and also um, there may be competition for any job vacancies. And sometimes when your experiments don't go according to plan and you get no results, it can be disheartening. So these are the pros and cons of being a researcher in pharmaceutical sciences in academia. The income of researchers in the pharmaceutical sciences don't come from a single source but tend to be made up of different income streams which are independent of each other. The first income stream is the scholarship, bursary or research grant. This can be topped up with industrial funds made available by industrial partners who have an interest in the research outcomes of your work. And the uh, industrial fund can range from 300 a week to about 400 pounds a week. In addition, uh, researchers get extra money for teaching and the money they get is in line with the st standard teaching rates for teachers in London. On top of all of this, they may also get a salary as a researcher, which normally ranges between 27,000 a year to 40,000 a year. So the four sources of income are scholarships and bursaries and research grants, industrial funds, teaching earnings and research salaries. Um, for a teacher in London, these are the salaries. This is taken from the government website. Uh, a newly qualified teacher is guaranteed to be earning 32,000 minimum per year. An unqualified teacher will be on about 22,000 minimum, which is equivalent to 11 pounds an hour, whereas a newly qualified teacher will be on 16 pounds an hour at least. Um, so it's actually worth getting a PGCE FE or a PGCE after graduating. So what are the qualifications for getting into research in the pharmaceutical sciences? Well, firstly, you definitely need an undergraduate degree in chemistry pharmaceutical science or biology and this needs to be a 2-1 or a first. Then you most likely need a master's in a specialism such as organic chemistry, analytical chemistry, bioinformatics or statistics. Since these are the main elements involved, the main skill sets involved, in working as a pharmaceutical scientist. Organic chemists synthesize drugs. Analytical chemists are skilled in extraction and purification of drugs. Bioinformatics is an excellent skill for identifying drug candidates. And statistics and experimental design are useful for analysing the large data sets produced by research. So armed with the a master in any of these will be a great use to actually getting accepted into a research position. However, a PhD in a specialised area is advantageous. Um, the ability to do literature research and review is a skill that you should be able to demonstrate. It's also advantageous to be able to demonstrate a good knowledge of analytical and organic chemistry, a good computer skills abilities, especially in statistics and bioinformatics, and a strong interest in a particular area such as uh, biological and chemical knowledge of current developments. It would also be advantageous for you to demonstrate a creative mind, like coming up with your own ideas for future developments, 
and even having written up your own personal research. And finally, if you can demonstrate ability to do fundraising or turn ideas into money, then that would also be an advantage.